Good day, well, my name is Kaden Nazokere and welcome to lesson number 12 from my textbook, The Distinction Bound Student. Right, um, you, I also have grade 10, grade 11, and this is grade 12, and I also have business studies, grade 11 and 12. All right, so let's get down to the lesson. All right, as usual, we start by revising our homework. All right, question number one, define the term business cycle. Okay, I'll use my favorite. Business cycles are successive periods uh, of fluctuations in economic activity. All right, number two, name the four phases. We have recession, depression, recovery, prosperity. Next one, which phase generally occurs when there is a widespread drop in spending? That will be a recession. The most severe downturn, which is seen by some economists as an inevitable part of the economy is known as that will be a depression which turning point marks the end of an economic depression obviously that will be a trough because the the other one is a peak and that one comes at the end of a um what do you call it a prosperity yes all right moving on they are the answers so you can go through the answers yes and mark yourself now in this lesson, we're going to look at causes of business cycles, right? Remember, we say business cycles are successive periods of fluctuations in economic activity. So we now want to discuss what causes this, right? Why is it that we don't have this just a smooth economic growth or maybe just nothing happens. Everything is the same all the time. Nothing changes or maybe a a smooth downward movement why is it that we have something like this all right so that's what we are attempting to answer in this lesson all right let's find out so first and foremost we have a school of thought that says markets are inherently stable so these guys here they say markets are stable oh sorry they say markets are stable and they say fluctuations are caused by exogenous reason. And on the other hand, we have these guys here. They say markets are not stable. Naturally, markets are like this. Up, these ups and downs are normal. And so we have different points of view. So let's find out who says what. Okay, that's the, the lesson. So there are different theoretical explanations for economic fluctuations. Like I said, uh, these are exogenous factors and endogenous factors. So who says what? Right. The first one, it's a school of thought started by Professor Mil Milton Friedman. Let me put it here. This guy here. He started this monetarist uh, uh, approach or school of thought in the 1960s. So according to him and those who buy his idea, and we call them the monetarists, According to them, markets are inherently, where is it? They, stable. Fluctuations are caused by exogenous factors. So exo is coming from a Greek um, word, which means outside. So they say, let me put it here. They say markets are inherently stable like this. This is caused by exogenous factors this is caused by things from outside so if if we come to think about it we'll see that yes there's an element of truth in what they are saying because um yes there are things from outside like look at it at this point in time okay fine you could be watching this video uh you know years from now but you will obviously know this term covid19 or coronavirus Right, this thing is coming from outside. What is happening right now? We are seeing something like this. And so to come to think about it, then the monetarists were right to say markets are stable and fluctuations are caused by exogenous factors. Because this thing is external. It's not internal. It's, it's not part of a market system. So this thing is coming from outside. So it causes market, uh, it causes a downward movement. It causes GDP to go down because people are in a lockdown. 
and so people cannot you know people cannot buy goods and services as much as they did businesses are forced to close as i'm doing this video we are on level three of course you watch this probably in future but as i'm doing this video we are on level three here in south africa and um, there's still a lot of restriction uh let me think clubs are closed right now uh betting is closed right now uh you see there are so many businesses that are still closed and um just because of level three uh some businesses opened but if we were to move back to level four those businesses will will be closed like today is the third of march uh the, sorry the third of june and it's on the first that's when we move to level three and before that so on today is wednesday on on sunday people couldn't buy alcohol the whole country and he, uh, on monday they opened it so look those who are manufacturing beer they couldn't be make they couldn't make money so gdp for south africa was severely affected and that was caused by an exogenous factor which is covid 19. so yes the monetaries were right right external factors eg government intervention now these guys this is what they say is the biggest uh, cause of uh, fluctuations they say government intervention is the main reason why we have fluctuations so according to them they will then come to a conclusion that uh, government should not intervene but you'll see it just now so they say government intervention in the economy is seen as a main reason like i pointed out already yes we have other things yes we have natural disasters we have weather uh, we have consumer taste we have covid 19 so we can also add pandemics here Yes, as an example, because this one is a typical example and everyone uh, will agree with this one. All right. So according to them, they say government should not intervene. So they say government should stay away. Keep your fiscal policy. Keep your monetary policy. So according to them, they shouldn't be national treasury. According to them, they shouldn't be reserve bank. Uh, I don't agree with them on that one. I think government intervention is important. Uh, we have goods that are pure public goods. Uh, those goods are non-excludable. Those goods are uh, non-rivalry. So if government stays away, who is going to supply us with these pure public goods? Um, I don't know the answer to that because, come on, I don't think it would be possible. So government not intervening, or maybe they mean government should not intervene in as far as prices are concerned. They must just be there for the provision of public goods. I don't know what they meant. But um, yes, I don't agree with them on this one. But there are other things that I agree with them for sure. All right, let's find out who else says what. All right, we also have this approach, the Keynesian approach. They say markets are inherently unstable so these guys are saying this thing here is natural but something from outside must actually come and smoothen this something like this and create something like a smooth economic growth like that so these guys here are saying markets are inherently unstable so they say government should actually intervene and bring stability in the economy so we are having two different thoughts two different mindsets the keynesian saying markets are stable are unstable the monetary saying markets are and i want to pose a question to you so which idea do you think the south african government buys all right they say here forces from within the market uh, system cause fluctuations so they say it's coming from inside so there is, there is a self-correcting mechanism. So they say, they say, uh, markets won't, you know, just happen like this, a, a long downturn. They say something is going to correct this and they won't go up forever. Something will sort of correct this so that we create something like maybe a smooth growth 
maybe they say so they say there's a self-correcting mechanism in the market system that acts to correct any economic boom or recession so you see here i was correcting a recession here i'm correcting a boom so they say it happens naturally that's what they say i don't know what you say right so keynesians believe that these fluctuations are part of a market economy and government has a duty so they say government is supposed to intervene they have to implement a monetary policy they have to implement a fiscal policy we have these two policies here in south africa uh the, the 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 reserve bank and the mpc the monetary policy committee they are responsible for this one and then on the other hand the national treasury is responsible for this one so this one is two main instruments this one here that will be interest rates so it's the repurchase rate the repo rate the repo rate repo rate whatever so we have the repo rate which is the rate at which the reserve bank charges commercial banks uh for lending them money and then we also have money supply which has to do with the printing of money yes we have banknotes we have coins so the reserve bank is responsible for the supply of money so they can increase money supply they can reduce money supply they can increase the repo rate they can reduce it right now the repo rate is low obviously you'd expect because like i said covid 19 they want to stimulate economic activity, obviously. Right. On the other hand, we have the National Treasury having two tools also. We have government spending, which, and we also have taxes. So this basically is the national budget. All right. So you can agree with me that, yes, the South African buy, the government buys the Keynesian approach. And so examples are these, and you can have a look. And so these guys here they maintain or they say that government should intervene and they say if government intervenes that will bring stability in the economy i don't know if you agree with them or not if you don't agree with them it makes you a monetarist if you do agree with them it probably makes you a keynesian all right so this concludes the lesson and uh, here's your homework as usual you can't just you know sit at home and do nothing uh we want you to do this homework and then in lesson number 13 we are going to revise this and lesson number 13 is going to be a very short one uh because it's kinds of business cycles there isn't much to say there just for you to know oh these are the kinds all right uh, as usual i would ask you to subscribe to the channel share this video with your friends uh, make them know that yes they can learn and they can pass the subject so thank you so much i'll see you in the next lesson